weren't y'all the women's dream team, right? That's sometimes the part that gets sketchy because here we are for our country, but we don't really get the recognition in our country. We don't get the support. Our games obviously speak for itself. So we went 58 and 0. We played in Russia, we played in China, we played all in asses. Cuba, we played in <laughs> Slovakia, we played, you, you name it. <laughs> So who we got in the pool hall today? Lisa Leslie, what's, what's up? up with you? Hey, I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, How's your uh, pool game? Mine's nice, how's yours? Oh man, it's all good, it's oh, subjective. She, she, where's, where's, where's that little chalk? She, she about to hustle the hell it's out of subjective. me, I know it is. I'm actually a lefty, you know that, right? So Lisa, you are a trailblazer and I appreciate that. Of the many things that you do the most, what does it take to be a trailblazer as a black woman in this country? It really is about believing in yourself, learning to love yourself. And I think for me, listen, I was six foot in the sixth grade. I wore a size 12 shoe when I was 12 years old. Now you look around and you like, damn, that is <laughs> taller than everybody in this room, taller than most people at home watching. And it was different, I was different. And so I think my mom did an amazing job of really helping me to understand that. In that belief, where did basketball come to fold? Basketball, I feel like, is my destiny, and that was it. I, I love competition. Everybody doesn't like to be competitive, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that part was really natural for me. I love to win. Talk about all these ambitions and dreams you had as a kid playing basketball, but the WNBA didn't exist. So how far did you think you could take basketball? Once I got to high school, uh, it was there that I realized you can get a scholarship. So that scholarship and me going to college to play basketball became the first piece. The second piece was that I wanted to be an Olympian and represent our country. Basketball is how I'm gonna travel the world. So there isn't a professional league. You're at USC, okay? You enter the Olympics. Weren't y'all the women's dream team, right, at the time? In well, no, <laughs> appreciate the love. That's sometimes the part that it gets sketchy because, again, here we are for our country, but we don't really get the recognition in our country. We don't get the support the way that we would hope. So we went 58 and 0. 58 and 0. We played in Russia. We played in China. We played all in asses. Cuba. We played in Slovakia. <laughs> we played, you, you name it. We played everywhere and beat everybody. And it's tough because America is not recognizing any of that. You know, nobody sees that. Nobody knows about these trips, but so it was I, an I amazing was for time. for y'all then? The media that you've seen in Barcelona for the 92 team, it's not there. What, how, how did y'all, how did y'all handle that? They formed the U.S. Olympic team in 1995. They created a USA national program where we, 12 of us, traveled the world together for the whole year playing everybody in their country. It was an amazing time in our lives. We would never trade any of that, any of our teammates for that experience representing USA, wearing that red, white, and blue, and kicking butt. So having our American flag raised and hearing our anthem on podium after podium and having gold medals placed around my neck, that's the highlight of my career because that was always my ultimate goal and I made it. Is it my turn? Hell yeah. I like to beat you. You you're really trying to beat me right now, ain't you? I, oh, always. So the gap between the Olympics and the inception of the WNBA, what are you doing in that meantime? So I was in New York. When I get the call, so that's it within that one year, right? 96, I'm, I'm out, I'm gone. And then we get the call about the WNBA and they're like, oh, it's gonna be in the summer. So I'm like, okay, cool. It'll be like a summer league, right? Like we wear reversible jerseys. We probably play like Long Beach Day. I don't know. By the time it was all put together, we played at the Great Western Los Angeles Forum where the Los Angeles Lakers play. So like my locker and Kareem's locker is the same locker. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> I was not ready. You know, I really wasn't. You all aggressive with it too. <laughs> I should have hit mine harder. <laughs> they gotta take over. <laughs> I was probably was seven or eight at the time, and I remember the week got next commercials. See what I'm saying? What do you remember from that shit with Spike Lee? Now Spike was awesome because you know he's an avid basketball fan. He, he's he's New York. <laughs> Poor Knicks. Spike is one of those guys who was like, we got to tell this story because this is really what it is. Put together, give me your best, which was myself, Cheryl Swoops, mm. Dawn Staley. They had men lined up because they want to be in a commercial, but they're ballers around the cage. So they broke them up in four teams. So there was a guard, you know, a forward and a center. And we played these men 
just like the commercial said, all day. Three on three, screening, shooting, buckets, blocking shots, like really playing these guys. And they filmed all day. And like the commercial says, basketball is basketball. We didn't win every game. And I will say to this day, we only lost one game. So he says in the commercial, they didn't win every game, but they won enough to say basketball is basketball. And so that's where the, yo, we got next. That was in my line. Here, get in there. <laughs> Just be more aggressive. It almost feels like for black women in the league, you gotta be an athlete and like a model or an athlete and an activist. And it's difficult to just market yourself as a black woman that's really, really good at the sport. Do you see some discrepancies there in terms of how white women in WNBA and how black women in WNBA are marketed? This is really being kind of deep, but when you think about it, we watch television and we love white people because we watch shows and we've watched shows for many years where we have characters that we love because we like, oh, I like Cindy Brady, I like these people. And I don't look at them based on because she's a white girl and I'm a black girl. I identify with things she's talking about, things that's going on with her family or you know, maybe what she's wearing, right? So I don't think we've had that reverse where a lot of white people have had the opportunity to see black people in a way where you would like, love, and admire them other than seeing them in sports. I love how you said it too. There's so many of us doing great things on an everyday basis. Absolutely. That should be reflected that people can find some level of commonality with. Absolutely. There it is. Yeah. <laughs>Lisa, let's see what you can do on a pop a shot, okay? You oh, got 60 seconds. I'm gonna ask you some questions. See what you can do, Coach. Let's do it. Let's get it. Three, two, one. The one athlete dead or alive you wanna play with? Muhammad Ali. Who are you listening to before a game? Tupac. Funniest teammate you've ever had? Delicia Milton by far. <laughs> What's your signature move? Depending on where the defense is. What you hit them though? A turn around off the glass. Dirtiest opponent you've ever faced? Pasha Byers, man, my teammate. <laughs> she eventually became my teammate. Is it hot dog or a sandwich? A uh, sandwich. Favorite pair of kicks you own? Anything by George. Eight seconds. Gold medal or the WNBA championship? Oh, man. Always a gold medal. Always. Come on. Who's the greatest WNBA player ever? Ever? Including myself? I gotta vote for myself. I got 96, by the you way. You better say yourself. <laughs> I mean, am I in the running or what? <laughs> you see, I got 96, right? You Ooh. killed that thing, Lisa. Yo. Boom, boom. We be old school. Uh. Blow it up. <laughs> Thank you for coming to Pool Hall. It's great to have a legend in the building. Appreciate you. Thanks for having me. This was fun. You already know.